Good evening. Welcome to Bible class. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father and our God, Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, this once more and again, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you, Father, for allowing us to assemble here to study another portion of your word. We just pray, Father, that you would help us to uh, clear our minds, that we will be able to receive the things that will be taught unto us. And we just pray, Father, that you would bless us, Father, that we would always be able to listen to your word, Father, to help us to grow, to help us to deal with the things, Father, uh, that we cannot deal with, but we know uh, through your blessings, Father, we'll be able to get through them. We just pray, Father, that you would be with those, Father, who are yet sick, shed in, and bereaved. We just pray, Father, that you would give to them a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father, that they may once again be made whole and that they would be able to uh, arise from their uh, sick bed to go about their normal duties and chores. We pray, Father, that you would be with the leadership. Uh, pray that you would bless the uh, elders here, Father, that they would continue to do your will and to uh, shepherd the flock. We just pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins, Father, whether they have been by words, thoughts, or deeds. We just pray, Father, that you would bless us, that we would be found doing those things that are pleasing and acceptable to thee. And, Father, these blessings we pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now, our teacher for the evening will be none other than Brother Randall Tucker, minister to the South Union Church of Christ. Hello, greetings, family and friends, and welcome to another exciting edition of Bible Study. It is our prayer that things are well with you and your family at this time. We rise to give God glory and we rise to give God praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised. Come on, family, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, how magnificent, how marvelous, how mighty, how majestic is the name of the Lord our God. Here it is. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. As we assemble here for spiritual nourishment and spiritual encouragement, it is our prayer that something is said that will encourage your soul. We're so grateful to have visitors who are watching online real time with us on tonight. And uh, we pray that you have your Bible, that you have your electronic devices, that you are ready to receive with meekness the engrafted word of God that is sure enough able to save all of our souls. To those who are our brothers and sisters and sister congregations who have navigated over to our YouTube channel, it's just good to see you here. And you're always welcome as we study the word of God. Uh, it's always good to see our superlative saints of South Union. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we pray that God continues to bless you in mighty ways. Now on tonight, secure 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Meet us or beat us. 
to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we shall pull up the spiritual parking brake with verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. Amen. And here the Bible, the word of God reads, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself is judged of no man. If that's in your Bible, just type amen. Amen and praise God. We would like to use for a thought, theme, and thrust of tonight's lesson, the value of spiritual knowledge. Amen. The value of spiritual knowledge. There is a qualifying term that precedes knowledge. We're speaking of spiritual knowledge. You know, family, each year, the United States, the federal government spends billions of dollars on public education. As a matter of fact, state legislatures all over the nation convene each and every year to review, to process, to plan, to prepare, to massage and finesse educational budgets that are very important to the welfare of all citizens. In a real sense, family, we all know the value of public education. And I'm persuaded that we all understand that each of us is educated in some area of life. With respect to the world of academia, uh, we must become lifelong learners. We never stop learning. We must continue to grow. We must continue to add to our knowledge because the more knowledge that we can attain and as we apply that knowledge, uh, the world says the more successful we should be. And we all desire to take care of our families and provide for those uh, that are depending on us. And this hinges upon education. I mean, we've been blessed to live in a nation where we can be educated and we can learn in our respective fields and then go on to work in those fields and earn a decent living and a decent income. Of course, we know that things are not perfect. We know that things are not altogether without blemish or flaw. And we know that even in the economical structure, uh, of the United States of America, there's much work that needs to be done. Yet at the same time, as we place tremendous emphasis on this physical education, on this academic education, let us never forget that it's just as important, if not more so, to be educated spiritually to attain, here it is, spiritual knowledge. You see, God wants spiritual knowledge to grow. Amen. He wants spiritual 
knowledge to grow. He does not wish that we grow and then we become stale, stuck, and stagnant in our growth with him. Just as we expect to learn and to grow with the cares or with the affairs, I should say, of this world, we should be um, concerned about the affairs of the spiritual world. Because family, at the end of the day, we're not just body. We are body, spirit, and soul. And so therefore, in a real sense, I am a spiritual being having a fleshly existence. <laughs> Let me say that again. I'm a spiritual being having a fleshly existence. This is why Paul would say that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building, house of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Everything that we see is temporary. But the things that we do not see, Paul would say, are eternal. So when I leave this world, I want to have a positive forwarding address. I want heaven to be my home. And the way that I can lay hold on eternal life, I must become educated in what thus saith the Lord. Amen. God is not interested. He's not impressed with uh, educated fools, someone said. Uh, God wants us to be educated according to his word, that we might not just do well on this side, but that we might live with him forever in the eternal realm called eternity. Now, as we unpack this particular text, uh, I want us to extract four uh, dynamic precepts and principles that I believe will set forth spiritual stones upon which we can stand and that we might continue to grow stronger with the Lord day by day. Do you have time for this? All right, family. Meet us in Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. I'm going to transition uh, the reading uh, to the Amplified Version. And uh, let's focus our attention on Proverbs 8 and verse 10. Proverbs 8 and verse 10. You should find these words. Receive my instruction in preference to striving for silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Receive my instruction in preference to striving for silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Now, this particular word that's used here, knowledge, bears reference to spiritual knowledge or knowledge that is revealed from God. The a uh, proverbial writer would have us to be reminded that there is tremendous value in spiritual knowledge, which is actually our first dynamic. You see, the value of spiritual knowledge is that, number one, it increases our overall value with regards to eternity. See, with regards to eternity, we're not just examining the right now, but we are considering the hereafter. And on the timeline of eternity, God wants us to grow. He wants us to know. He wants us to apply knowledge that we have here that we might be successful on this side while at the same time placing emphasis on spiritual things that we might live with him on the other side. The proverbial writer has us to know that in this particular text, he said, receive my instruction in preference to striving for silver. In other words, receive uh, the information that I'm giving you and place it on a level that's higher 
than what you can attain here physically, than what you can acquire here physically. Because what I'm getting ready to tell you, what I'm getting ready to share with you, my son, will train you, will teach you. Here it is, will equip you with how to handle what you have there in your hand. You see, this is very important. And this is why uh, this concept of having a spiritual awareness of the every awareness of God is vitally important in our lives today. How many of us can reflect uh, back on uh, ancestors, some who have gone on, those who have uh, gone on to sleep, our ancestors or those who are older than we are, and how they deposited positive spiritual gems and nuggets in our lives. They may not have had the kind of education that we've been blessed to acquire, but they knew the Lord. And in their knowledge of knowing the Lord, they imparted that knowledge unto us and it has equipped us, it has trained us, it has made us capable and able to handle the physical blessings of life because we have spiritual knowledge of how to uh, achieve great success and to attain these particular uh, things of importance on this side and not become a fool and lose it all because we don't have a knowledge of who God is. I praise God for those who've walked before me, who have taken time to pour into my life. I, I praise God for those who prayed for me and those who have lived in a Christian uh, lane and have driven in that lane for many years. And I learn from them and I grow from them and I'm inspired by them. Uh, that has taught me how to handle physical blessings. As a matter of fact, here it is, family. Spiritual knowledge equips you it prepares you, it teaches you how to handle physical blessings. That's what spiritual knowledge does. It, it teaches you that um, if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep will be your downfall. It, it teaches you to love your enemies and do good unto them who despitefully use you and say all uh, manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. It, it tells us that a soft answer turns away wrath. Not only does it add and increase my knowledge of how to handle the physical things, physical blessings of life, but it adds value to my overall perspective of who I am and uh, who God would have me be. Uh, see, adding spiritual knowledge to our lives is much like um, adding on uh, square feet to your house. You see, if you add on square feet to your house, it has the tendency to increase your value. The value of your house will continue to go up, to increase, as you add square footage onto your house. <laughs> Come here, family. The Lord wants to equip us and add some spiritual square footage in our lives. This is why it's so important. It is absolutely important for us to consume ourselves with the study of the word of God because God is adding value to our spiritual tabernacles to our spiritual houses. And when we leave here, not only will we have done well on this side, but we can have a home in heaven with the Lord on the other side. Somebody ought to help me teach here for a moment. I don't just want to be uh, successful. I don't want to be successful only on this side and be unsuccessful on the other side. I want the Lord to use me. I want the Lord to get glory out of my life. Uh, Lord, use me till you can't use me any anymore. I want God to get his glory. And when I walk in the paths of righteousness, I know the Lord is going to take care of me every single time. And so the value of spiritual knowledge, uh, first dynamic is that uh, it adds value uh, to our overall, amen, our overall um, existence, uh, having this spiritual knowledge. It adds value. 
it increases our standing, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Okay, uh, travel with me now to Proverbs, Proverbs 24. We'll look at Proverbs 24, and let's look at verse 5. Again, reading from the Amplified Version. Uh, Proverbs uh, 24 and verse 5. And here the Bible, the Word of God reads, And by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be uh, filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong and is better than a strong man. And a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. Read verse five again. A wise man is strong and is better than a strong man. And a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. The value of spiritual knowledge. Dynamic two. It increases our strength. The value of spiritual knowledge, dynamic too, it increases our strength. The text gives us to know that a wise man is better than a strong man. <laughs> oh, family, uh, a wise man, he himself is very strong because he knows how to handle himself in the situations that life will present him. He knows how to condition his mind. He knows how to plan for the future. He knows how to seek the counsel of God in moments of distress. He knows how to praise God. Here it is in the middle of it, in the middle of what he's going through. A wise man realizes that I need to stay connected to the Lord, not just when uh, storms brew and rain begins to fall in my life, but I need to stay connected to the Lord every single day of my life that the Lord will continue to enrich me and continue to empower me for the days that lie ahead. Uh, you know, maybe someone is like me and you enjoy boxing. Is there anybody who enjoys boxing watching on tonight? Uh, just type in the live chat if you are a boxing fan or a boxing fanatic. Amen. I enjoy a good boxing match. And, you know, one of the greatest boxers, uh, I remember hearing him say, that uh, not going to reveal who that particular person is because then you may have a great one and you say, well, he's not the greatest. So one of the greatest, again, uh, boxers. I heard him say that um, the boxer that's in the ring has uh, two things that he must master. And if he's able to master these two um, uh, properties, these two elements, these two um uh, strengths. If he's able to be strong in these two areas, then he will be a great champion. The first is he has to have the heart of a champion. And then secondly, he has to have the head of a champion. Heart and head. Heart is the wheel. You have to have the wheel to win. Amen. Someone has said it's not about how big the dog is in the fight, but how big the fight is in the dog. Amen. You have to have the heart of a champion, the heart to win, the will to win. And then what is will to win if you don't have the head of a champion? If you have the heart, the will to win, but you're being... Um, uh, slow in your thinking and you allow someone else to outthink you in that ring, then uh, you're going to be up uh, against a tremendous challenge. But when you can combine both dynamics, you have the head of a champion, you can think through the fight, and then you have the heart of the champion, you have the wheel in the fight, then you're on your way to being tremendously successful. And so having this spiritual knowledge allows us to have heart and head. Heart is the wheel, but the head teaches you how to 
uh, use your will, amen, how to exert, how to handle. And so we need this spiritual knowledge to help temper our lives, to help tone our lives, to help uh, the trajectory of our lives. Talk back to me in here, somebody. Uh, this is why it's very important that we uh, possess this value uh, and grow in our spiritual knowledge. Let's move on to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. We're almost out of time. My goodness, time flies. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Again, reading from the Amplified Version, the Bible, the Word of God reads, oh, this is powerful. Therefore, my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it. And because they have no knowledge of God and their honorable men, their glory are famished and their common people are parched with thirst. Ooh, we listen to this again, family. It's right here in the text. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it, and because they have no knowledge of God. All right, family. Listen, our third dynamic as to why it's very important to have this spiritual knowledge, what is the value, how does it work in my life, is because uh, spiritual knowledge keeps us from destruction. Amen? Spiritual knowledge keeps us from destroying ourselves. See, this is exactly where the world is right now. The world is continuing to wax worse and worse. Man is growing worse and worse in his imaginations, in his pleasures, in his lust, in the things that he um, holds in high regard. All of these situations, all of these um, circumstances of life that lead basically back to vanity and nothing that is actually uh, meaty or nothing that is actually of great substantial value, of great substance. Um, at the end of the day, it's nothing. We are destroying ourselves. Mankind is destroying himself over and over and over again, being led by his own passion. And the Bible, here's the tragedy. The tragedy, worse, worse than, 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 than destroying yourself, is destroying yourself when you didn't really have to. Amen. Uh, how many of us have been in wrecks, car accidents? You know, it's one thing to be in an accident uh, because accidents happen and we pray to God that we don't have to encounter those particular moments. But it's another thing when you could have prevented the accident. When you, when you saw it and you could have prevented it or perhaps you were distracted, doing something you shouldn't have been doing and you could have prevented it. Listen, God wants us to realize that if we have this spiritual knowledge, there's some pitfalls, there's some potholes that we don't have to run across. There's some situations that we can avoid all because we have spiritual knowledge that helps to navigate our vessel. Amen. The Bible says that they are going to be destroyed uh, without even knowing it. And that's exactly what we see in the world today. People are destroying themselves without even knowing it. And the reason they're doing it is because they don't have knowledge of the word of God. And they're doing things, they're committing acts. They are living in, in ways that are ungodly and unrighteous, destroying themselves and not even knowing it. So, the benefit of being knowledgeable of the word of God, it keeps me from destroying myself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody ought to help me teach here for a moment. Um, let's move on to the fourth dynamic because time is of the essence. Let's go to Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. And let's examine verse 6. Isaiah 33. Verse 6. <clears throat> 
Here, the Bible, the word of God reads, and there shall be stability in your times, an abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The reverent fear and worship of the Lord is your treasure and his. Listen to that one more time. And there shall be stability in your times, an abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The reverent fear and worship of the Lord is your treasure and his. Um, this last dynamic is that having spiritual knowledge and the value of how it operates in our lives and why we need to grow continually in our knowledge of God's word is because the knowledge of spiritual things helps to keep us secure. Amen. It helps to keep us secure. Listen to the text. The reverent fear and worship of God helps to keep us stable. See, this is why it's so important, again, to stay connected to God. When I can stay connected to God, it helps to keep me stable. It helps to keep bring things in balance in my life. Have you ever uh, experienced uh, how many of us are domestic? Let me just ask that question. How many of us are domestic? Do you know what it feels like to load your washer? And when you put all of your towels in or your clothes in, have you ever heard that sound that the washer can make when you're, here it is, come on, load is unbalanced. <laughs> when the load is unbalanced, it will wake up the house. Who am I talking to in here on tonight? Who's with me? Do you know what it's like? Now, you have to be domestic to understand this example. Uh, when the load is unbalanced, it can destroy your good washer if you don't come and balance the load. And nowadays, they have automatic balances, but sometimes they don't altogether uh, work very well. But if that load is unbalanced, Many times that washer and that process of washing is going to stop. Come here for a moment, family. It's our worship. It's our reverent worship unto God that helps to keep us balanced, to keep things on the right track so that our lives will continue to grow, that we will continue to grow with the Lord. Sometimes things stop on us. Why? Because we are out of balance in our lives. We need the Lord to keep us in balance. And according to this text, we've just read it. According to this text, it's through our reverent fear and worship of God that we can remain stable. Amen. So you ask me, you ask me, what is the value of spiritual knowledge? I'll tell you, there is no equal value to having the knowledge of God permeate your soul, guide your steps, and keep you secure in this war-torn world. It's very important that we grow in our spiritual knowledge. Do we need educational wisdom and uh, the knowledge of this world? Do we need the knowledge of our particular studies and fields of expertise and, and in the world of academia? You better believe we need it. We absolutely and altogether need that. Likewise, we need to know who brought us thus far along the way. Let's increase our spiritual knowledge unto God. That's our time for tonight, and it's our prayer that your soul has been encouraged. We thank you for studying with us, and perhaps there's someone right now who desires prayer or Bible study. 
we encourage you to call the number that you see on your screen. We believe in the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous because we know that it avails much. And we invite you to contact us if you'd like further Bible study because we know that God's word will never pass away. Amen. Pray with us if you would right now before we close. Our Lord, our God, gracious God, our heavenly father, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Lord God, we come and we touch and agree that without you, we can do absolutely nothing. But Lord God, you've been a comforter. You've been a guide. You've been a tremendous father. And Father, even in our waywardness and our warpedness and our wickedness, you've still loved us. And for this, we praise your holy name. Father, we ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and sin. Help us to be better people and to always walk with you and work for you. Father, defeat us in those things that are anti, that are against your will. But empower us in those endeavors that will uh, give you glory and help us along the way. Father, bless us to be more spiritual minded and to place emphasis on spiritual things so that you might continue to grow us day by day. We thank you always for Jesus Christ, heaven's precious gift. It is in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen. Amen. And God bless your soul. The value of spiritual knowledge. We pray that you have a wonderful week. We love you. Have a wonderful week. We love you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. We love you. And if it's the Lord's will, we'll see you again for another great Bible study. Good night and God bless. Trials dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God will lead us To that blessed promised land But he'll guide us with his eye And we'll follow till we die And we will understand it better By church we see Cherished plans have failed, disappointments have prevailed, and we've wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord and according to His word, and we will understand, understand it better. It better. By, by and by, by church was singing by, by and by. Oh Lord, Lord when the morning comes, and you know all the sins of my God, God we will tell the story, story how we overcome. Hidden snares often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder what the test when we try to do our best, but we will understand it better.
Bye 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 bye. Oh Lord, when the morning comes, and you know all the saints of God, we will tell the blessed story how we overcome, and we will understand. Smile on my face. You're my every.